I have a message that really struck my heart, and I pray that it's going to bless you. The title of my sermon is Turnaround Prayers. I'm going to speak about something that I don't think I've ever really heard much about, but a way that God can do something in your life for people that need something to happen right now. 2 Chronicles chapter 14 and verse 8. Asa had an army of 300,000 men from Judah equipped with large shields with spears, 280,000 from Benjamin armed with small shields and with bows. And all these were brave fighting men. And Zerah the Cushite marched out against them with the army of thousands upon thousands and 300 chariots and came as far as Meresheth. And Asa went out to meet him and they took up battle positions in the valley near whatever. Then Asa called to the Lord his God and said, Lord, there is no one like you to help the powerless against the mighty. Help us, O Lord, for we rely on you and in your name we have come against this vast army. Lord, you are our God. Do not let mere mortals prevail against you. The Lord struck down the Cushites before Asa and Judah. The Cushites fled, and the army pushed them as far as Gerar. And such a great number of Cushites fell that they could not recover. They were crushed before the Lord and his forces, and the men of Judah carried off a large amount of plunder. Lord, use this word for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I think many times in life we have a hard time, you know, just trying to get back on the comeback road. No matter what it may be, whether it be a comeback road of a good attitude, the comeback road of losing weight, I think all of us get to the place where you get so far behind in life, everything that feels like coming back feels so daunting. The task feels overwhelming. Or maybe you've burned a bridge in a relationship, and the idea and the energy and the emotional energy of, of seeing that relationship comes back just feels like, it's, it's like you rather just kind of stay hurt then pursue the energy of healing. Giving up is a real thing, and giving up is a very easy thing to do. Change takes a long time, and that's why we fail to want to embrace going through the process to see it happen. And sometimes things do take time. But this separation can also happen in our walk with God. Long times of being separated from his word. Long times from being separated to God in prayer. And the space between what we want to be versus what we are right now feels so far. It feels like why even bother to take the journey? We start to think it's going to be a long time before we can ever be what we need to be. And I might as well stay on the miserable road because I don't think I have enough of what it takes to make it all the way back. And the miserable road we know is not pleasant, but it might be easier that we think in our flesh to ever try to take the road back to God. But I have realized that the road back to God and the road back to freedom is not as hard as we think that it is. Because I want to introduce you to something this morning I like to call turnaround prayers. Because we serve a God of sudden breakthrough. And what are turnaround prayers? They are the kind of prayers that make it feel possible that change can happen, and it can happen right now. God's not interested in you proving yourself to him because you can. God's not interested in you working your way back to joy because you can. Life can happen so fast that so we spend our life being picked apart little by little, one small event and circumstance at a time, to where we finally get to a place of the gradual erosion of the soul. But supernatural turnaround is God's ultimate desire for his children. We are in a place, we are in a church, we are in an environment, we live on a campus 24-7 called the Dream Center where God is doing turnaround stuff all the time. <laughs> King Asa was faced with the option of panic or pray. While the massive armies were mounting up against him, instead of relying on military defeat or cowering in defeat, he turned to the Lord in urgent prayer. One powerful and humble prayer, Asa decided to confess his total dependence upon God, and he appealed to God to protect his own name. In verse 11, he says, Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on you, and in your name we are up against a great multitude. He was overwhelmed by the multitude, and all he can do is come to the end of his power, and he comes to the beginning of the realization of just how much he needs God's power. And the Lord responded to his prayer, and he won the victory over the Ethiopian army, 
and he began to pursue and to conquer and to take stuff back rather than being up against the wall and feeling that it was all over. In life, when you are faced with dead-end spots, meager resources, dead-end solutions, that's the time that you got to lay it all on the line. And those are the time for turnaround prayers. What is it? A turnaround prayer is a radical pivot uh, from being defeated to giving the fight back to God. When I came to L.A., I know exactly what turnaround prayers were like. When I came to this city and we had nobody left, all I had one night, I told the story as a prayer walk. And the, the ministry, not one person showed up to a church service one day. And I took a prayer. It's not that funny. Someone laugh. It's not that funny. But it is kind of funny But because uh, my dad's a man of church growth and, like, preaching to zero is kind of funny, but I get it. But anyways, but I walked around the city of L.A. and I had nothing left. You talk about Bon Jovi's living on a prayer. I mean, that's literally all I had left was living on a prayer. And I walked around and I just literally said, God, I've got nothing left. All I have is you. And th that was a, a moment in my life where God turned the circumstances around. And that was the moment where everything started to happen from that moment on. You see, the enemy's afraid of sudden breakthrough. He doesn't like sudden breakthrough. He's afraid that you might come back to life again, that you might dream again, that you might just get enough fuel for God to change you in a moment. And sometimes a breakthrough in life from God is to start a new discipline. Sometimes a breakthrough you get from God is the turnaround of your circumstances that only God can orchestrate. Sometimes it's just simply a new fire in your soul where you get up and you just kind of want to fight all the time. Or you just become so vulnerable with God in your prayers that God reaches down from heaven and gives you something because of the frail, open, courageous vulnerability of your prayers. What is a turnaround prayer? It's a prayer that acknowledges through total weakness that you can't do it anymore. It's a total loss of self-confidence, and it's an awareness of God confidence. It's pulling over to the side of the road for no apparent reason in an old parking lot and unload everything about your life unto God. It's being vulnerable to the core. Turnaround prayers are the most beautiful thing to God, the kind of prayer that says, God, help me because I love my sin so much. It's the kind of prayer that says, God, help me because I love my compromise so much. God, please help me because I love my fornication too much. God, please help me because I'm addicted to worldly pleasures and I love to hold grudges even though it's not right. God, help me because I love my depression more than I love freedom. It's a messy, sloppy, no holds barred, emptying of your soul, and the kind of prayer that if other people heard you pray that way, they might even wonder if you're even saved or not. The kind of prayers that cause the hand of God to move are the kind of prayers that are so honest about what you're going through, so honest about what struggles you're dealing with, so honest about your intentions, your motivations being false, and the inner dealings of what's going on in your life. Those are the prayers in heaven that God looks down and smiles upon. God doesn't smile upon religious chants. God doesn't smile upon um, us going to church and repeating a certain amount of words every single week. God looks down at that, and he says, that's not the prayer that I'm looking for. He's looking for a messed up, jacked up prayer life that says, oh, God, I don't even know if I'm saved or not, but please help me. I need you. The kind of prayers that cause the hand of God to move or the kind of prayers are so honest that if other people heard you pray, they would lose faith in your walk with God. If you've never prayed that way, the kind of prayer that if other people recorded a secret conversation in your car and they tweeted it out to everybody else in the world, your prayer of vulnerability to God, if you didn't lose 5,000 followers or five followers or three followers on Instagram, it wouldn't be the kind of prayer that pleases God. It's the kind of uh, word spoken by the Apostle Paul who said, I am the chief of sinners. I'm the biggest sinner of all of them, Apostle Paul said, and we call him St. Paul. But he was a Paul who knew how to pray jacked up prayers. 
Turnaround prayers are the kind of prayers that you're so honest before God that when you say that you're guilty of it, it's even hard for you to say it sometimes. All the stuff that you're guilty of because it hurts you to say it. You know God is love. You know that God knows everything that you've ever done. But it still hurts you to say it because you are mentioning the sin that's in your heart. And it hurts to say it because you know it's so against God. But God in heaven looks down and says, I'm so glad that you're talking to me in this way. This is exactly why I gave my life. It's the kind of prayer that David prayed after his adultery when he said, my body is wasting away, God. I am dying on the inside. Help me. It's the kind of prayer that David prayed when he wondered if he even loved God or not. Before a great turnaround in the Bible, there was always first a turnaround prayer. And here's the truth. It's good to open up to man. It's a wonderful thing to open up to man. But you can't go all the way in confessing with man what you're going through. Even counselors have a limit to how much they are legally allowed to hear in your confession. But with God, you can throw the kitchen sink at God. We will never open up to man even though we might go pretty far, but then we can with God. Because the Bible says, cast all of your cares on me, for I care for you. There is no boundary with God that is too far of what you can tell him. And God is looking for a church. If we're going to see revival, we need the kind of prayers of repentance that come from good old fashioning, question everything about our intentions, no holds barred prayer to God. Have you ever pulled over the side of the road and just unloaded to God in prayer? It's the greatest feeling in your life. It's the greatest thing you will ever experience. Just pull over the side of the road, get you something that you like to eat at a fast food restaurant or something. Just sit there or go to a healthy place, chop, stop, get a salad with seven toppings on it, with bacon, and before long it doesn't health anymore. But just go to that place and just pull over the side of the road and just unload everything that you're going through to God, everything that you're dealing with. It's the most liberating thing that you'll ever do. Because you've got to get to a breakdown in order to get to your breakthrough. And I love the way people pray in the Old Testament. This is what I love. I mean, there's a a pattern emerging all the time in the Old Testament. They went to God and they unloaded everything. Just try it. I mean, just try, just, if you've never done it, if you've never been fully vulnerable to God, I, I just go home and try. It's better than a 30-minute foot massage. It's amazing. You'll say, this sounds brutal. No, at the end of the brutality, it, it's absolutely the most liberating thing you'll ever do. I love the way people prayed in the Old Testament. There's a similar pattern that emerged. They went to God and they unloaded everything. They talked about wanting to quit. They talked about having no desire left. Um, they talked about, one even called him, Jacob called himself, Jacob would call himself a worm. And then the second part of the chapter, it's always amazing how their vocabulary changed. They would go in this, you would read the chapter, and they would be like, the sky is falling, woe is me, this is who I am. And then the second part of the scripture, they would change, and then they would talk about how God would bring them through. But God will do this, but I am this, but God will do that. It's the craziest thing. Read the prayers of the Bible. They go from the sky is falling. I have so much compromise in, in my heart. My intentions sometimes I don't even know. But, but then they start acknowledging that God could pull them through. That God was the one that could make it happen. And then they, they go from desperation, death, to this incredible place of vision. They'll talk about conquering the world and doing all these great stuff and you're reading it. And to the person that doesn't read through the spiritual lens, they'll be like, this person might be a little bit crazy because they're going from, in one storyline, how bad things are. And then they're going through the change once God gets hold of their heart to what is possible. When you get to the end of yourself, then you can start getting to the new place that God wants to recreate in your heart. The greatest thing about coming to the end of yourself is the new beginning that God has for you next. And the voice of God was changing their tone after they unloaded everything. Turn around prayers, ugly, honest, vulnerable, painful, but those are the kind of ones that lead to breakthrough. God doesn't mind hearing your darkest secrets because when you reveal your love for compromise of sin in prayer, it means you believe in God enough to give him a chance to move in your life. Have you ever had an issue with your children and they they were like, they they didn't tell you anything about what's going on in their life and then they told you something about their life that they're struggling with and you actually got a little bit happy 
Because for the first time in your life, you found out that there was a sense of vulnerability in their life, and you didn't want to judge them. I mean, you're just like, I'm just so glad you told me this, you know. Because, But I think God up in heaven, he knows what you have done, but he just waits for those moments in our life where he's up in heaven, he's like, I already knew it, but I'm just so glad that you told me. God is pleased when we let him into the wrestling match of our soul. A turnaround prayer is when you empty so much of your soul to God that you have nothing left but a blank canvas by which to start all over again. And King Asa didn't know what to do when he was overwhelmed, so he said, God, we are powerless. This was his prayer. We are powerless, but you are powerful. That's the prayer that moves the hand of God. We live in a world that preaches self-empowerment and even the worship of self, but God responds to people who say, God, I can't do this on my own. I am powerless. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5, Paul describes someone, some people as saying that they have the appearance of godliness, but they deny its power, avoid such people. Interesting. Avoid such people who have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. He rebukes people who are window dressing in their faith of God. My prayer is that today, people who need a breakthrough in your walk with God will go home or you'll come down to this altar and you'll pray the most honest, vulnerable, sloppy, imperfect prayer you've ever prayed in your life. I think everyone after this service should go to Costco and buy 20 boxes of tissue just so that you can go home and cry through 20 boxes and say, God, here I am, this is who I am. Or if you're not a crier, sneeze or whatever, but use those things for the glory of God. Amen. Don't try to find yourself, lose yourself. God said that way before Eminem. Because God's supernatural strength comes after we give less emphasis to our own strength. That's why the Bible says his strength is revealed in our weakness. Because we are at our strongest when we lay down the hammer of our spiritual life and say, this is who I am, God. This is what I struggle with. But through you, only you, I can get to the other side. God, I don't like people very much. Help me to love people because I don't even like them that much. Every single biography of a hero of the faith I've read, there was a turnaround moment. I love reading biographies. I love reading because there's always that one experience in someone's life where they came to the end of themselves and they came to the place of God who could do it all. They poured out their heart. And sometimes it was in strange places like D.L. Moody walking down Wall Street or uh, Billy Sunday putting down his, uh, his, uh, his baseball glove in the middle of the outfield to go serve God. I mean, these extraordinary encounters when you get to the end of yourself, a turnaround moment, a confrontation moment. When they put up their self-will and self-interest and dark side of their own soul up against the greatness of God. And they came to the revelation that I can't do this on my own. I need you, God. And every time they fell short of that contrast, it led them to a beautiful place where they realized that turnaround begins with the need for the perfect in their life and not the superficial. Turnaround prayers are powerful. Sure, we're telling things about a God telling God things about our life that he already knows. But the great thing is we're coming to grips that we are falling short of the glory of God. And that simple acknowledgement empties us of human power so that therefore we can become a candidate for supernatural power. Turnaround prayers, vulnerability, honest. And I mean, if you haven't prayed the prior kind of prayers that you're about to say something next, you don't want to say it to God. You haven't really prayed until you prayed that way. God, forgive me for a bad answer. Oh, God, forgive me for this. All of a sudden you're like, God, forgive me for it. Oh, man, I don't even want to say it. Those are the kind of prayers that you know you've got to God. And those are the ones that you need to release. I'm not telling uh, just empty yourselves of compromises. telling God we need him back into our lives. And I believe that there's some comeback turnaround prayers. There's some people that are ready to have the greatest breakthrough they've ever had. And that breakthrough is found. But in just a few minutes, we're going to come down to the altar. And whether you just want to come down and think about it, you don't want to scream it out loud. I understand it. Or if you come down to the front, you're like, God, I have this in my life and screaming out loud. That's fine too. Or if you just want to come down to the front and just, just kind of softly say, God, I have this in my life. I have this in my life. I have brokenness in my life. However you want to express it. But you got to express it. Get to the place of your life where you call out the things in your life that you struggle with. 
You call out the compromise in your life, and you bring it to God where God can take it, and he can say, all right, I'm going to put into my blender of blessing. I put in uh, your former murder. I put in uh, your former addiction. I put in your current addiction. I put in your adultery. I, if it's all of that, I'll put in that, my little spiritual blender, and I'll make a a beautiful smoothie out of it. That's a weird analogy right there. But he'll make something beautiful. Out of it. That's why he says he'll make beauty for ashes. But you got to get to the end of yourself to open up that avenue of spiritual power. God's not afraid of your most honorable, uh, honest, vulnerable, guilt-ridden places of your soul. He longs to love you in spite of them. He wants to get to that place where you drive. You know, you know those memes like whenever something like happens or there's a great victory. You know, and like on Twitter, Instagram, there's always like that meme where like somebody's going like this, like, you know what I mean? Like Leonardo DiCaprio when he's going like this or, uh, or the coach is going like this. Every time I see those memes, I actually think about God in heaven. Every time we unload our soul, I think about an Instagram meme or a Twitter meme. I know that sounds crazy, right? But God can even use the cesspool of social media for his glory. But I think of God in heaven just going... I am so glad that you finally came to the realization that that issue in your life was a big deal. Now, it's, now I can do something with it. Now I can begin to work with you. I'm going to turn things around. I'm going to give you a sudden breakthrough. I just might give you the power that you've always wanted that you never could find. I'm so pleased with that turnaround prayer. Thank you. I'm so glad you told me that. Because now I'm about to do something great in your life. Tell God that you're discouraged. Tell God that you're depressed. Tell God that you're going through something. Just get alone. Get in your room. Shut your door. Just say, oh, God, I am struggling with this. I am paranoid about this. I am nervous about this. I am dealing with this. And just cast all of your cares. Because one, one thing is going to happen. God might give you a miracle that you're looking for. Or he just might give you the miracle of the heart that simply suddenly begins to process everything that's going on in the world and you see it through the, the spiritual lens of what God wants to do where you don't see the current struggle you're in you see the possibilities of a consecrated life unto God and you start seeing the perspective and possibilities and miracles and breakthrough and open doors and opportunities come to the end of yourself this is a kind of sermon This I know this is not like your typical Sunday morning like you can do anything overcome you can but you got to get to the end of yourself to get there. This is repentant, revival, old-fashioned. Come before God. We, we're we're going to need, like, in the next four weeks or so, we're going to start preaching, you know, just the beauty of repentance. I want to start a series called The Beauty of Repentance. Where you see repentance, think about a guy outside the Staples Center with the yellow sign with the black letters, you know, going to wave and all that. And acting like repentance is some brutal thing in our life we go through rather than seeing the freedom of saying, God, you want the worst parts of me. Thank you, God. Thank you. You want the worst of me. We're afraid to give God the worst because we're afraid of judgment rather than giving God the worst and finding freedom. All over this room this morning, there's some people today. First of all, your turnaround prayers, you'll say, I need Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I'm away from God. My turnaround begins by saying, I'm tired of living my life unto myself. I want to live for Jesus, and I want to know Christ as my Lord and Savior. And my turnaround begins with salvation and eternal life by acknowledging Christ to be the Lord of my life. If that's you, when I say three, I want you to raise your hands. One, two, three, just lift them up. My turnaround begins today. I dedicate my life to Christ. I give my life to Christ. I surrender my life to Christ. I want to be saved. I want to know Christ as my Lord and Savior. I want to be dependent upon God. I want to receive the gift of salvation and eternal life. Hands are going up everywhere. Everyone that raised your hand, repeat these words after me. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life on the cross for me, I dedicate my life to serving you. Cleanse me of my sin. I repent, but now I turn to you where I find my hope and freedom. Thank you for dying for me, and I live for you. In Jesus' name, amen.